Hello, mortals, and welcome to yet another episode of Dice Ex Machina, our saving throw show dive into Theros, the D&D book of monsters and mythology, you might say. I am your myth keeper, Riley Silverman, and joining me as always are my team of champions, and we will introduce them to you now, starting with Ruben. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Ruben Bressler, aka Mox Ruby. Uh, and I will be playing Claw this evening. Claw is a centaur druid of the fairies band. Um, and he is a worshiper of Nylea, the god of the hunt. All right. And we will now go to returning back this week. Welcome back, Danielle. Yay. Hi, hello. I am playing D. D is a human. D is a bard. Uh, D is wherever you want to be. If you've ever wanted to know, uh, you pay for your whole seat, but only be on the edge. Um, and D is a follower of uh, Phoenix, the god of deception. No, you are not. You are oh, a follower like, what? of Perforo. <laughs> not you Gosh, too. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's been two weeks, but it's been two weeks. Well, Changing your religion is a pretty big deal. She goal. may be, but she oh, doesn't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> Callista is just okay. gonna lose it with this group. But yes. <laughs> do, do you? Did you want to keep going, or that was it? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess you. I guess we D is clarify. such a proficient liar that it actually makes sense she that could she's be. a follower of Phoenix, but yes, right. canonically you are a follower per, 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 or I should say more accurately, Perforos has chosen you as right. his champion. Uh, and then speaking of gods of deception, uh, how about our friend Jordan? Hi, my name is Jordan Pridgen and um, I am playing Lysandros, who is a, uh, he's a rogue and a satyr because I got the horns. And uh, he's a he's a, uh, a bit of an illusionist too. He likes to like mess with people, and he uh, he drives up a lot of debt because he's a big gambler, and that's his whole thing. And uh, that's him, and me. Yep, and he's a follower of Phoenix. Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. Yes. Great tonight. Great start. <laughs> Speaking of people who aren't so sure they're following their god, uh, let's go down to our last player, Ash. Last but not least. Hello, everyone. I'm Ashlyn Rose, and I am playing a Leonin fighter named Callista. She is a bounty hunter of sorts, and she's found herself following, eh, more like serving the god of Erebos in some way, a way we're not too sure of yet. We'll find out maybe someday, but for now, she's 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 listening begrudgingly to Erebos. We know it involves talking to like dead fish. And <laughs> yes, <laughs> and, things like and that. Uh, also dead birds. birds. Yeah, birds. birds and yes, presumably dead other things. A dead yes. tree at one point. We kind of we kind of rushed past that because we were right. running out of time. That's true. That <laughs> so. Uh, there's, it talks to dead theme things for you work. may have noticed. <laughs> right. Oh, and also, Danielle, uh, last week, I think we realized, we did the go, we went around and described our characters in episode two, mm. but I think some fans didn't, hadn't heard you describe your character physically, mm. and they just wanted to know for fan art reasons, they wanted to know what oh. D looks like. Okay, so D is, um, D, D is a warrior, and imagine um, someone who was the most hack Grecian warrior you have ever seen in your life. Um, imagine dollar store Xena, um, just with an <laughs> like like an Amazon budget. Um, you know, uh, 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 the the sword is nice, maybe not the best um, things that you could buy from local traders. It is a brown. Um, uh, brown leather armor and then a brown leather skirt. Um, actually, it's pretty close to, if you've seen the uh, photos that we have taken for the, um, that we are using for thumbnails and things, it's basically very close to that outfit. Um, except with the exception of there is a necklace with a um, kind of fancy bejeweled ring at the bottom of it that she wears every day. Nice. And uh, we actually, that came up because somebody asked it on our Discord. And oh. so if you are a fan and you want to get involved with the fan community at Saving Throw, there is a very active and very friendly Discord yes. that you can join. So join that. And uh, I, I check it. Some of the other players check it. Uh, come talk so with it's us. A, it's a good place to come hang out and ask questions. And there was a little bit of activity last week when people were very excited about a certain unlock at the end of the episode. So yep. that is something that you can check out. 
And while we're thinking about that, let me go ahead and let you know that uh, a sponsor of the show is returning for us this week is Hero Forge, where Yay. you can build your Ooh. very own custom minis and you can help customize your own game. And of course, the cool thing about Hero Forge right now is they've actually added in last year a colorful mini option. And so actually Dom's gonna pop up on screen. I actually made a mini of uh, the character that was introduced last week, Kia, Ooh. the sage-like follower right. of Clothis. And uh, I actually made this character a while ago, but I, I got when I first got the colorful options of, of Hero Forge, I made that and I was very excited about it. I actually made all of the Broken Pack characters on uh, Hero Forge as well one day, including right. Dom, is the, over, is, the, if, is the overlay still up? Yeah, it's, I cool. think it's up. Including our benevolent overlord, Dom Zook. Here's nice. a mini that I made of Dom. And so everybody who's watching it can see that delightful, excellent Amazing. work there. As you can yeah. see, he has a big, thick pile of source books at his feet. Oh, I thought you were going to say big, thick beard, but yes. Yeah, well, that too. He has a great bushy <laughs> beard. But uh, yeah, Ooh, so that is uh, that is our Hero Forge thing, and that is that they bring Amazing. they help us bring the show. But more importantly, the people who help us bring the show are you, the fans, the viewers. You help keep this afloat. You help keep it possible, and you have contributed things that have actually contributed some fun things to the show, including yeah. our flashbacks in the second episode, and of course the reveal last week. We learned a little bit more about Kia and who she is. So those kind of things are really fun. So it's just, there's a lot of ways you can participate in the show. And I, I would love to hear your thoughts on, on the show in general in the Discord. So come hang out with us. Speaking of which, we've already had a little bit of generosity from fans of the show tonight. Let's kick things off. We actually could, let's start the show off with a toast. Right now we have, well, we have a toast tonight. And the toast comes to us already from Soul Reaper 4208, who let us know, Welcome back, D. Glad you're back. Now kick some nether regions. So thank nice. you very much, Soul Reaper. Yeah. I'm glad you're with us live let's tonight. Let's kick that's some fantastic. nether regions. I like and that. Yeah. So that's our first toast for the show. We also have a couple of rerolls which are unlocked by subscribers, which is a great way you can support the show. We currently have a reroll for the players that comes to us from Bard. Uh, 17 or 1971 that is a re-roll for the players so let mark yourselves down that you have a re-roll and then okay. uh it's a me bondo gave two re-rolls <laughs> so thank you it's a me bondo thank i appreciate you. that thank so you. much hey. i'm going to need them so yes. much so thank you <laughs> And uh, that is, I think, all of our fun top of the show announcements, but we just wanted to, oh yeah, uh, there are some unlock goals that you can get as people just help contribute to the show, help to to build the story so, so far. Uh, as, as we know, if we get to $25, then we get a, a re-roll for the entire table. And then up from there, there are some fun unlocks, a couple of couple of like power ups for the players is also we have tonight actually uh, a volunteer from our cast has said they would they would do a special thing if we unlock a level so if we get to that we'll get to hear from them doing that and Ooh. of course we also have a special subs category in our tiers that if you unlock that you as the chat as the fans get to help control where the show goes next so that'll be really fun as well and with that out of the way champions are you ready to dive back into theros I Let's am do fully it. Prepared. Absolutely. I'm ready. All right, here we go. Welcome to episode four of Theros, the D Dice X Machina, and an episode that is call it is called "Who Laughs at Death." We begin in a small inn on the outskirts of Melitus. Now, for those who weren't here last week or didn't hear this, Melitus kind of serves as essentially the Athens of Theros. It is a vibrant, very diverse town. There is, there is lots of color. It's a town that prides itself on philosophy and the study of magic and intelligence. And it's a wealthy city. It, it, is, it is flanked at the outside of the Bay of Melitus by two massive guardian statues that are incorrectly remembered by the citizens as being two great warriors who battled over control of the city before finally making peace, when in fact the reality was that they were two lovers who had founded the city amongst their own peace and lived together and loved each other and created this beautiful city. Its architecture is interconnected walkways of various stones 
The colors are bright, they are loud, they are ostentatious, they are everything that is exciting and glorious about Greece, or in Theros in this case. And so we find ourselves with our, our characters who have spent the night at an inn in the bustling seaport area of the Bay of Melitus. They have not yet entered the city proper. Our back story we've had so far, they, they left Neolanton on a mission to head north. Callie, our Leonin, driven by orders from the god she serves, Erebos. Lysandros looking to take the black in his ledger back to red. D instructed by a dangerous criminal named the Gorgon to bring Lysandros to Melitus for reasons that are unknown to her and she's not paid enough to ask questions. And <laughs> Claw, just kind of along for the ride. Just kind He's of, been instructed by his to, god to head I'm away. I'm trying and, to get my tours, my centaurs yeah. company. Yeah, you know, get some more good, uh, good, good footing on that. The way to Melitus was a little bit chaotic. They were attacked first on the way there by typical bandits, the kind you find on the road. Not much of a challenge for our travelers, although often battles can be deeper than they mean to be. And while the battle itself caused no scars, it reminded them all of scars they carry from previous points in their own lives. And as they arrived to the gates of Melitus, suddenly they were surprised by the appearance of a dead returned who had ridden as far as he could on his horse in by in pursuit or being pursued I should say rather by two other returned they who they quickly our champions quickly defeated in battle we need to think of a good team name for y'all so I can keep stop counting the, the champions we'll figure it out we'll find it out in the <laughs> yeah. we uh the champions defeated those two returned they discovered a mysterious mask on the face of the return that they were pursuing that contained a series of ciphered and hard to decide, hard to read instructions, except for the name Kia and a small brief phrase directing them possibly towards an area mysteriously known as the Court of Arrestus. And just as they began to investigate this, they did all receive a very brief and unsure omen of the light, the, the world going gray, sounds dropping to a whisper, and an ominous golden mask that Lysandros recognized as the mask of his god, Phoenix, appearing in the sky. Their solving this mystery led them to a small home, uh, bespoke full of stray cats with a, hey, we got raided by Jason Charles Miller, guys. That's yeah. awesome. Hey, hey. this is the raid. My, uh, Welcome, my fellow uh, Nerdist News buddy. Yeah, I didn't they realize found it. their way to a small, quaint home that was full of a few stray cats and a kindly sage-like woman by the name of Kia who helped them decipher more of the mask and convinced, and able, able to instruct them on where the court of arrest possibly lay. And the name of a returned Varius, who's the mask possibly belonged to. It's about all she knew, or at least all that she was willing to tell them. And they headed about their way as we, the audience, found out that this Kia may have secrets that perhaps the characters will never learn. But we know that she has elven ears, a trait not found typically on Theros, and that she serves the god of destiny, Clothis. Now we find our characters waking up the next morning at a tavern, at a, not a, maybe at a tavern. I don't know what you guys did the night before, but I believe you had a room at an inn at some point. Uh, you can all take a long rest, there uh, you your go. DMD beyond, so you can start Yay! fresh. Yeah, that's Every most one of you for had Cali. a pretty good night's sleep. You were all pretty comfortable, except for Lysandros. Aww. Andros, you felt as you were heading back down the hill towards the inn the dice that you carry in your pocket at all times, just they just seemed a little bit heavier, just a little bit like they were weighing you down. You don't really know, it's it just as if they were just twice as heavy, but enough that it felt off to you. As you woke up this morning, they were fine again, but you have this nagging feeling that you were missing something or that you are being pulled towards something and you can't quite place it. Mm. And I assume, I don't want to speak for you as a character, but that probably affected your sleep to some degree. Yeah, I think that my relationship with Phoenix is such that he doesn't give me any like, he doesn't give me direct orders or signs all that often. And if something does kind of feel like it's coming from that, it's a little, um, it's worrying. <laughs> it often doesn't mean good things are afoot. Right. <laughs> all right. So you all have woken up the next morning 
at an inn that we will call the, let's call it the, I don't know, the cracked pot. It's a, right. it's a little quaint little place. Uh, it's definitely, the thing about Melitus is that unlike, you know, Theros, it's an ancient world, but it's a world that itself is ancient. There yeah. are ruins. There are, there are cities that have places that have risen and fallen in the history of Theros before. So a lot of the buildings are actually leftovers from a previous era. And this is definitely one of those such buildings, one that the, the newer, the more wealthy residents of town probably aren't as excited to hang out anymore because they have newer glorious buildings to go to. And this is more of a just kind of quaint little seaside inn. I, I, I've got a small pitch for the history of the crackpot. Go for it. It was a like street philosopher who like set up a whole philosophy yeah. about like drink and life and, and everyone was like, he's just a crackpot. And he's like, uh -huh. I'm not taking that as an insult. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it. That is, that is now the history. Yes. That is, <laughs> yes. So we're, we are uh, having some breakfast. Mm -hmm. Um and some coffee and we're looking over the garden here, I guess, suppose. And um, you feeling all right, Lissandros? Oh, well, I, I didn't exactly sleep as well as I normally do. Now, you know, I'm, I'm normally a pretty lighthearted fellow about these sort of things, but I have to say coming back into here, I, I don't know, I, I was feeling a little off going in. I think you've been here. You've been here before? Oh yeah, I've been here many times but just this time i, I don't know it, it it was i i got vibes you know vibes what, what is vibes i you feel vibrations in the earth I, nah man vibe vibes is like sometimes you feel like real good vibes and sometimes you're like nah man not them vibes which vibes yeah. were you feeling well you know how gods like to just throw little symbols that don't mean anything towards you <laughs> no Okay, well, I do. <laughs> uh, it is. It's something they do sometimes. I, and, I uh, know what you're talking about. D, I know. Your, your relationship with your god, I feel, is not as robust as the rest of our relationships. Well, Although we I, all I have, have a sword. Do you? A god, yes. You have a god sword? Yes. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. That's uh -huh. interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, by, I apologize. By a, by a super, by a just like a god sword, whatever well, that is, I have one. <laughs> I apologize for assuming. Thank you. I accept your apology. Uh, well, I, I don't have a god sword. I have these dice, um, which were my father's, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, and uh, well, just this is going to sound silly when I say it, but when we were coming back into the town, uh, they. They felt heavier than normal. Mm -hmm. Has that meant anything in the past? Yeah, who's to say? I don't always pay that much attention, but I, I, I have carried these around long enough that if something changes about them, well, I would know. Well, have they ever felt heavy before? Uh, you, you know how items that uh, may or may not be connected to God's work, they've uh, they've twitched, they've, they've rolled badly or rolled well when I haven't been expecting it, uh, th things like that. Uh, and all I can say is, despite not exactly knowing what it is that I'm trying to be told, I feel like something happening, ah, well, it's, it's something, right? Sure, yeah. It probably just means we're supposed to just like keep going forward and like go to the Gorgon. It's probably a sign that we're doing everything right. The fact that your dice feel weird is your dice being like, yeah, man, just like, Go do the stuff you're already doing. It, I it mean, feels when, right. When I saw, when you came into the tavern, this thing went off like crazy. All I could hear was your talking. It like, literally your voice made me want to, I don't know, my head explode. Your voice was driving me crazy. I you know don't what? Know I get that surprise very often. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Uh, I'm, I think that D has the right of it. And as I'm saying the rest of what I'm about to say, uh, I'm tying up a small like um, canvas or burlap baggie about four inches tall that has small pale, I'm putting small pale pink petals into this baggie uh, from some flowers that I'm carrying on my person. 
Um, I think that D has the right of it. I think that she is uh, she is correct. We should proceed with the path that the gods have laid before us. Although there are two paths, I will say. One leads uh, to the Gorgon. The other leads uh, to oh, to the, oh, what was it called? Or Oriskos? What was the other place Oroskos, called? Oriskos, I believe is what yes. she said. The temple or something. I don't know. These gods. Arrestus. Arrestus. Weird names. Arrestus the, the, is what I have Arrest us. That just sounds bad. If you put those two words together, it's arrest us. Oh, that's awful. Arrestos. We can't go there. Or arresting, we should like resting that... place, like take mm. a chill pill and rest. I no, feel like it's that definite, is a... Yeah, it's definitely no that if we go there, we're going to be like uh, Lots of good omens. I will say, but the first one, of course, is here in this city, um, going to this uh, friend of yours, uh, I assume. Um, I don't know anything about what you do, but in any case, this is a bag of valerian. Um, This is really good for insomnia if you need help sleeping in the future. Well, I usually Um, don't. I just drink my way to sleep, but uh, well, you can drink. This is makes an excellent tea. Is is also another good. uh, uh, a good application of the valerian. Oh, well, well, if we have two choices to make, you know how I normally make choices that I have a hard time figuring out? And he holds up his dice. We could always let Phoenix decide. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. uh-huh. I would yeah. rather not. Or you could take- <laughs> my Hey, aren't you, so, <laughs> aren't you super sleepy? You could take some of that valerian and then we could all just nap some more. And then when we wake up, I feel like maybe that ch- we'd figure out what the right choice is. Oh, no, don't worry about it. If you wanna it. like do, just take some valerian because it's hey, all gotta make you so Old sleepy. Seder trick. If you wake up and you're feeling sleepy or hungover, uh, the trick is that you drink more and then you stop noticing that you are tired. It works like a charm. <sighs> I say we uh, can make a, so it seems there are two choices and then a tiebreaker, essentially. You, we can go to the Gorgon and, or we could go to Orestes. Um, if, and now there's an even number of us, I'm not s- particularly good with math, but it seems like if it's tied, we can use the dice to break the tie. Look, I I am not interested in fates or chance or relying on a god. I grew up with the Leonin. We 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 don't. This this is all becoming way too complicated. Lysandros, how do you feel about your whole situation? You owe me. You're here to. You are going to help me either way, right? Oh well, I've got nothing better to do long term, but. I do have to say, right now, I am feeling uh, somewhat vulnerable, as it were, for reasons that I, I don't necessarily feel like describing to everybody, but it does have something to do with the fact that I have come into something of a windfall, which is an uncomfortable situation for me, for other reasons that I don't necessarily want to explain to everyone. Uh, are you, sure. Are you afraid? I would run- afraid? Are you, are you fearful? Do you have a reason to not wants to meet i mean the name the gorgon is a very terrifying name but it is it is merely no. a moniker. it's gorgon's really, chill man it's a nickname exactly d seems to have a good relationship you're still around they know about no. you it doesn't seem like that big of a deal uh, yes well uh no offense d but the more enthusiastic d seems about wanting to do something the more i do feel uh like slightly wary I'm not enthusiastic. Look, I'm like chill. Like whatever you guys want, man. Like, look, like we can do the arrestus thing where it sounds like we all maybe like get arrested or whatever. Cause I'm rested. I'm fine. Or um, we could do the Gorgon thing, which is like really cool. And where there are rivers of diamonds I've heard. And like, maybe everybody gets to make out with someone and like, you know, everything's made of plush and then we get to sleep again. All right, all it's that just sounds what, like it's a just lie, what I've heard. but <laughs> on the off chance that it's not, I could be interested in that. Okay. Let let's, me ask let's... you a question as the DM. Where are you all located right now? Are you in a room at the end of the cracked pot or are you in like the tavern area? I would and say- And also in... what is happening with Ashlyn's cat? Is this yeah. a cone <laughs> around her cat's neck? <laughs> That is a cone. Yes, okay. that's correct. Oh, I, don't want to I would say we're, you know, when you go to a Holiday Inn Express and they have like a continental breakfast area? Yeah. I feel like that's where we are. 
Yeah, I kind of imagine okay. we were like at a table in the back corner of a place. Yeah. Okay, I think that we will canonically call this the Wherewithal Breakfast because that's our friend Jake Wherewithal who gave us a food recipe <laughs> at one point. Ooh! And while we are currently, yes. who also, by the way, Jake just gave us a subscriber. So that's actually a great hey! uh, moment. I, I actually, I'm going to run down some uh, subscribers that we got right now and some rerolls that we have. Uh, currently, the players have eight rerolls and Ooh, I have four many. rerolls. And I'm yeah. just going to run down who gave those to us right now. That comes to us from Yonto7, Ghost Hack159, nice. Taming the Crisis, Vampire54, Adriosa, and of course our friend Jake Wherewith with all. So yes. uh, with Wherewithal. And so uh, yeah, the Wherewithal breakfast yeah. is a common breakfast. Ruben, what what kind of food do you find on the Wherewithal breakfast? That's the standard hotel hmm. one. Like the what is standard the... hotel breakfast? Yeah. Is this the kind of place uh, that has like a waffle iron or is this kind of like mm, more of like, just like, hey, we've got some English muffins and some cream cheese. Yeah, I feel like this is like old bagels. Not old, but like day old. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like not the best bagels. There's mm -hmm. yogurt, certainly. Yeah, Greek I'm not yogurt. sure how much Malaysian leavened bread yogurt. we've got. Malaysian yet. yogurt. Yeah. Um, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not sure how much leavened bread we've got yet at this point. That's true. In, 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 mm. in I would, yeah, pita. We'll like I think yeah. there's probably pita. There's oh, it was yogurt. definitely pita. There's capers. There's seafood because we're seaside. Yeah, um, there's probably a lot of seafood, honestly, because you are at a port and you're also at the part of the port where people have not yet gotten past the checkpoints into the city itself Ooh, and so we've got that a lot of the unregulated fish. salmon yeah, yeah that's the stuff oh that good good unregulated salmon we gotta scramble we gotta scramble yeah. my friends oh yeah so all right so here's ah. here's the thing uh sorry Callista, go ahead oh no, no no what were you gonna say i was going i'm merely trying to drive the chariot here trying to get us to a decision which is well we have two choices Pick I'm gonna one. say I rolled some dice while y'all were having this conversation because yeah. I just wanted to see how much time had passed and that's why I asked where you were located. And I would say that who amongst you has a high passive perception? Oh, that'd be me. Not me. I think mine's a nine. Okay, so no. 15. <laughs> okay. Mine's a 13. Okay. D, what's yours? I'm the druid, so it's I'm not a zero. It's a, it's a zero. Yeah, it's so probably a not a zero, but it's probably yeah, like a ten. Yeah. A <laughs> ten. Um, why don't Ruben? Okay, fifteen. Make a make a perception check for me, Ruben. Worse, worse than worse than a fifteen. Okay, <laughs> eleven. I would say you definitely notice that there seems to be someone. You kind of just notice, like, through the, like, doorway, door frame that leads to the outside, you definitely just notice, like, maybe, like, the shadow of an elbow. Or, like, looks like someone okay. might be standing there. You don't know what that means. It just it could be a That's person fine. on the street. You don't know. I will make a mental note. I will see if they make any aggressive action out of the corner of my eye, and I will continue to say, all right, let's make a choice. Okay. Let, let us make a choice. Uh, we are in Melitus. We can pursue Gorgon in Melitus. Or... Or we can pursue the mask in Orestis, elsewhere, uh, beyond the uh, river, which is further away. Seems like we should do the thing that is nearby rather mm. than the thing that is far away first. Also, do the thing that's not uh, 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 super scary. I don't know if y'all remember what happened with that, uh, uh, with the uh, 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 with the with the gray things and the yeah, the everything. Returned. Yeah, it sounds really really stupid it does so. seem very frightening however lysandros also seems frightened of this gorgon yeah but that's like one dude hmm. okay well, i'm I don't not frightened of it listen <laughs> Let's i don't make know. a decision though hello can you hear me yes yes hello <laughs> hi i don't know if i'm not a people person and i don't articulate <laughs> myself well or what but what i was trying to say earlier was if lysandros who is someone I need to get my job done is uncomfortable because of this thing with the Gorgon, then let's get that out of the way so that I can get my job done. Gorgon, 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 Gorgon. The chanting is not necessary. We've already agreed. <laughs> all right. That's I all will, I was trying to say. I will talk to the concierge and make sure that we are checked out of our rooms and uh, everyone finish up your Fruit Loops and we will get on the way. Um, I'm going to head over to wherever 
uh, the front desk equivalent is, but I mm -hmm. want to make an angle past the door to see if that figure is still there. Yeah, the, that figure is still there. I'm already gonna make you roll for it. There's, okay. there's, it's, it, they're not hiding. I'll okay, say. I'm and, just uh, gonna, Neon Heim, Thanks for the sub. I'm just gonna maintain my awareness of that character while I okay, get us ready to go. Okay. Uh, Kelly's gonna get ready to go, and while she's doing that, Ashlyn is going to wipe up a spill real quick from the cats. So. Mm. Okay. And uh, we currently have nine rerolls for the players and four for the Yay! Them. Yikes. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you. All right. So, sorry, Ruben, what were you doing? Because Ashlyn's checking out of the hotel. Shit. We got to okay. be out by 11 a.m. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. 11 bells. We got to be out by 11 bells. Yeah. So, You're all uh, set. let's get out of the building. I'm going to walk out first mm -hmm. and look left, look right, look left. Okay. Well, as you walk out, a gentleman that is standing there and he looks kind of burly. He's wearing pretty standard leather armor. It's not like when we were in Neo Lantern where the people that were like thugs were wearing obviously like Other stolen people's. armor from, from the guards. hermit crabs that I Yeah, call. these yeah. are not, these are people who they have pretty decor, like not decorated. They're kind of designed more to blend in, but he's definitely armored. And as you step out, um, he goes, hey, you see a, uh, yeah, you, you, you're talking, you. Yeah. What, you, see, what, uh, hello, yes. you see a, you uh, see a satyr in there? Yes. Okay. Um, what's what he look like? Maybe he looks like a satyr, human, like a satyr male. I mean, I know, but a say, does he have, like, does, that's. I don't, they That's look kind very of offensive. similar um, to me. They, yeah, they, well. He's got goat legs. He's got a beard. I mean, if I, if someone asked me if I see centaur, I don't just say he looked like centaur. I think that's, that's fair. You, that you is a fair point. As a rude Male, uh, smaller build uh, with a beard and horns. Okay, and now you're feet. just wasting my time. I go, I will just, you know what? Tell me. Why do, do you ask? Do, wait, 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 do why, me a why, favor. why, why, why? Maybe I, I have business. I want to see him. Well, you asked me a question. I'm asking you a question. All right. I'm walking here. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for someone to be walking here. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, look, I, look, my, bo I look, my boss, look my boss told me, come here, find a satyr, tell him to I come thought. see her. Sure. Tell, tell We're the lady, on our way. The lady we know. With the, Okay, look, I'm just doing you my job, man. wait for us to finish the continental breakfast. Just give us a minute. Just wanted to know where he was. You know what? Just tell him to come see the boss. I just wanted he to know will, where he was. He I was will. doing my What's job. What's your name? What's your name? My name is, is don't worry about my name. My name is my name. My name. <laughs> it doesn't matter what your name is. We'll come and visit and we'll be like, my, we're on our way. My name is we'll, Duanor. Okay, Duanor. Duanor. Ha Duanor. Duanor. Yeah. We're going to call him Dewey. Well, Go do and or your job, and we'll see you. I'm over. doing. I'm literally in the middle of doing. What you're actually making my job harder. We're gonna come see the Gorgon in a minute. You just get out of here. I'm. I'm probably gonna hang out. Just <laughs> all right. Fine. You know. You're gonna walk with us. Great. This has started out wonderfully. <laughs> no, hey, just... everybody. We've got a new friend. This is Doanor. <laughs> Hi, Duanor. I'm going to call what? you Dewey. I feel like we got off on the wrong foot. I'm sorry if I was rude. I just, the situation is, is it's it's not, it's not like my job pays me to be kind and polite to people. That's fair. So. That's fair. I assume most people don't want to come to see the boss. We want to come to see the boss. Like, it's cool. We'll all walk in together. Okay. Yeah. So I guess, I guess Lysandros at least will, will make his way to the exit as well. Okay. And join with them. Uh, yeah. I walk over. Uh, Hey, so are we taking off? What's going on? Yeah, we're going to go. Listen, don't let me deal with people anymore. This <laughs> has not gone well. Who is this person? I, it th does it matter? Hello. This person it, it is, is Duanor. It is a pleasure to meet you. My name is Duanor. I, I am here as a representative of, of the Gorgon. Yeah, I don't care. Where's Cal? It's Cal. I... Hey, sorry, what did I miss? Who's this? We're going to call her sword. Have, Hello, is it is a pleasure to. I, I'm trying to be a better people person. It is a pleasure Good. to meet you. Oh, me too. I, okay, yeah, what's up? I, we don't I am here in service of. We have the, a chaperone. It's okay. 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 Um, 
I, now I feel like you're being rude. I, I, I definitely, I definitely feel like I tried to improve myself based on your feedback, <laughs> you and now good. I feel like you're not no, giving me anything. This is to work not with. your fault. We're just a bunch of swarthy jerks. I mean, it feels like one. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe a bunch. This one seems nice, and he points to Callie, who was actually like kind of kind to him. He's like, she seems good. Just it feels Sorry. like you gave me. It feels like you gave me feedback, and I took it, and then you threw I, it in my face. So you were trying to say something, and we interrupted. What What were you saying? <laughs> I was I was just gonna. I was greeting you, letting you know that I work for the Gorgon, and that she <gasps> was told that you were here at this location. I am so sorry. Um, I am sorry. Hi, my name is Dee. Nice to meet you. Um, I am so sorry. Um, please accompany us on like my our trip and like everything we do or whatever from like now on until the rest of our, our lives because it sounds like really dope. Okay, I mean, I'm probably not going to do that because I have like a job in this city that I do, but I will, I will walk with you to the boss if that's if that is okay with you and your current situation. And if not, we're doing it anyway, but I'm just trying to be nice and make it seem like you have a, a choice. All right. I, and I'm being nice and polite and making it seem... Yeah, no, I don't have a choice. Where are we going? Let's go. Uh, so he leads you through the city. It, like you're still in the port area and there is a big vibrant... Yes, Ruben, you have a question? Yeah, are there stairs? Uh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> um, however, it... Super I'm, I'm important gonna, question I'm gonna everywhere say Claw goes. I'm going to say this. Stairs. Yeah, I'm going to say this. You are leaving the comfortable inn where you have a chance at, at privacy. Yeah. And you don't know where you're going to be headed to. So would Claw, with that information, make a decision? Not until we hit cobblestones. It's about okay. comfort for me. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. That's fair. Okay. I just remember last time that you... Oh, wait, no, it wasn't the... You, there was some shape change you did not want to do when there were people around. That's why I was giving you the right. Option. So I don't want to turn into my Nick Sporn shape okay. when there are cool. people around. I'm fine wild Noted. shaping. Gotcha. But cool. the God gift that is something I keep to myself and apparently to these three. That's fair. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so you are led up to there is. Um, I'm just going to put up a, an image real quick. Uh, there is a pretty bustling port happening here. And basically you see people loading things on and off of ships. And then there is this massive kind of pillared big building, like your standard Greek architecture, like just kind of what you think of the, the like marble building pillars, giant. That is where it's kind of the port authority where people are coming in to declare their things, get permission to enter the city. And he directs you kind of past that around that and there is a kind of side alleyway, and there is a gentleman dressed in a similar bit of armor to him, uh, who is is who's doing a little bit of smoking, uh, like a pipe, and then he sees you coming, and he kind of puts it away in a hurry, and he kind of nods at Duanor, and he opens a kind of a secret panel that leads down a hallway that is kind of going deeper, and so it's essentially a back alleyway to kind of slip into the city instead of going through the official checkpoints. And hmm. at this point, this is where you're starting to hit some cobblestones and some stairways. It's because you're going down, there's a lot of windy hallways that are narrow. And I would say that Claw probably is having a little bit more discomfort. It's not super narrow because it, it's gotta be wide enough for people to smuggle like goods and stuff through, but it's definitely not like designed for creature comforts. Okay. So um, Dewey, how long have you been a hired goon? How long have you been someone that a boss wants to talk to? Uh, what? I don't know. Uh, how long has it been, D? What, like a couple days now? Um, yeah, maybe like a good, like two or three sundown, sunsets. I don't know, man. We've been real drunk. I'm okay. talking about the generalized sort of person that crime bosses of all sorts tend to like want to find for some reason. Or the oh other gosh, I mean, I mean, I, as long as I've known you, it's been at least a couple like circles around this here bright sure, stuff yeah. in the sky. Am I kid? Am I right? Okay, uh, well, longer than that, then let's just. While say. those two are doing Unlikely. whatever that is, um, Claw is going to guidance himself and attempt to stealthily turn into a rat. Okay. Do you want me to do anything? Yeah, roll stealth check. Okay. I'm not very good at stealth. Well, keep in mind that you currently have nine rerolls. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if this is actually successful. So, uh, <laughs> 10. Okay. 11 yeah. minus one. 
I think that you think you're being stealthy, and I think that that he definitely sees you do it, but also okay. doesn't seem super phased. Doesn't by care. It. Okay, I'll turn into a rat and yeah. climb up on. I'll climb up on Lysandros. Okay. Yeah. So uh, he kind of just goes like, "Is that you know what I?" I've had too many conversations with you guys already. Let's just keep going. So then uh, he continues to lead you down a path. It is not unlike the path that you all took when you were coming through to the bot, like the underground gambling den that you found back in Neolanton, except for it is significantly bigger. It's much more elaborate. And you definitely get the sense that, that not unlike the fact that Melitus is a much bigger and more wealthy and magical city, that this is also in turn uh, got itself some significance. You also know that in the history of, of Melitus, it was this area was once ruled by a pretty despotic ruler before Melitus was founded. And so some of this may in fact be leftover catacombs and dungeon work and things like that from his era. So that is a, uh, a God, what was his name? You guys are more magic people than I am, but his name was I, Agonomicus. And so, oh, uh, you yeah. know, the Agonomicos, the ruler, uh, ruled the area that is now Melitus for centuries. And so you definitely can assume that some of these are probably left over from the Agamemnon. That is a, that is some era. deep lore, even for me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, it's right in the book for D&D. So it's yeah. right there. Uh, that's some writing down lore. Good work. Yeah. <laughs> so. Agonomicos. Yep. So, so that is, yeah. So is it normal for this type of chaperoning for someone of such high caliber winnings? I mean, it's normal when someone is told to come to a place and then they come like right to it and then don't come to it. So that's where we got a little, cause like we definitely had people tell us that you were in town yesterday and yet you didn't come to visit. So when that happens and when we find you an inn that's still outside the town, yeah, sorry, we occasionally do decide to check in on that information. Yeah, well, I uh, didn't expect that you would be so eager to pay me the money that I am owed and am going to convince you not to pay me, so. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I, I don't know what you're here for. I was just told by the person who pays me and keeps me from dying to come and uh, get you. Lysandros, well, my dude, you talk too much. I've been told such, yes. But so far it's worked out okay for me. Ghost in the Wind, MTG Wimbo Slam, both of you. Thank you for the re-rolls. We currently have 10 for the players and five for me. Ooh. Hey, thank you all. Nice, thank you. Uh, yeah, so Lysandros um, is a prized uh, 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 player, someone that everyone here loves. And uh, the Gorgon can't wait to meet his acquaintance in person. Um, because of how much like he just loves that dude. Like, look at look at that face. Could you hate that face? No one I'm needs sorry. that face. I believe that you mistook my statement of not knowing with me somehow still implying that I cared. I do not care. We probably should have been nicer to you earlier, huh? Yeah, maybe. I tried. I definitely put effort you out. Did. I that put a nice. lot of effort out, to be honest, and I feel like you didn't yeah. give any of it back to with me. A couple, with a, with a tiny, name. With a <laughs> tiny rat paw, I'm just going to do this at Dewey. <laughs> Dewey's like, Dewey Noah is like, back to you. Like, I'm not scared of a rat. Look, Bad I things just, happen to rats. <laughs> I just want to say that I respect those who work to live. Thank you. And uh, I you, I like. Problem. You are you are the you're the one of the you're the good you're the good one. I whisper to Kelly, say more nice things. <laughs> uh, so he takes you down, and yeah, you go through. You actually you, you definitely walk past a gambling den, and you walk past clearly like another fighting pit, but that is much more elaborate and much bigger and definitely has a huge crowd around it. Like the one that you, and you've actually, D, you've not fought in this one. You have not been, you've not been summoned up to the big game, the big leagues at Melitus before. So this is like, maybe like, I don't know, I don't want to speak for your character, but maybe this is something you have dreamed about, or at least you have been hinted at like, hey, if you do really well, you get to go to Melitus. Like that might be something, I don't know, but. Yeah, no, D is definitely in awe right now and looking around and having that moment um, of uh, 
when you see the thing that you want from behind the scenes, it's definitely, if you've ever seen a Pepsi commercial where a child is given a Pepsi by a, uh, uh, an athlete they love, yep. that is the moment the D is having. <laughs> but without me, the Pepsi Joe? or the athlete. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Thanks, Refrigerator Perry. Uh, <laughs> just kind of looking around and being like, oh. Nice. Eventually, uh, Claw, you, oh. Claw is just going to make sure that Lysandros' eyes don't go wandering and try to like ratatouille him back on the main path. Yeah, um, uh, Lysandros <laughs> definitely like sees a gambling den and just sort of veers, and then you just sort of like yeah, whack his head and he like whoa, I'm just pulling follows him, the direction. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm definitely remying, pulling you know, pulling him by the hair back on track. Just um, pull on each of the horns. Yeah, and, it turns. and by the way, Wild Shape lasts an hour. So let okay. me know if I run out of time. Ooh. We'll do. Or if I'm getting close. If yep. I'm getting close, I'll have to use another wild yep. shape. That is sounds very good. Hey, we have unlocked rerolls for the whole table. So everyone Yay! Oh my gosh, thank you so, so much. What are we so at now? Uh, we will see. You guys like have 14. 70. Oh, 14. D. 14. 14. 14. You have, sorry, yeah, you have 14 and I have six. Thank By the way, the D, my dice hmm. rolls did not get better last week. <laughs> that's a theme. So that's a theme. Okay, so it's all gonna be for you. <laughs> Just so you know, I have new dice again. Yeah, I, I wish I could just do the whole episode of me you. reading toast because our, our viewers have delightful toast, but I want to wait and get us there when it's time because <laughs> okay. otherwise we'll keep stopping. So uh, you are taken to an office. This is a the office that you were taken to, D, very much felt like not the Gorgon's office as much as like you were suddenly someone she needed to talk to. And so she commandeered somebody else's space and made them leave and do it. This is her office. This is, it's, it's almost a throne room. It is an elaborate room. There is a huge, just this ridiculously ostentatious chair that she is sitting in behind a desk. It is up a little bit on a riser so that when you are brought in there is there are chairs that are lower. There there is there are there are flames burning out of what, what is it called? The um brazers? Yes, thank you. There are there are two brazers that are burning and there are there are like taxidermied animals that are on the wall from hunts. There are there are things like there are just there are rare treasures that she has obviously collected and kept more out of a, just a sense of like, I have this now than like an actual, like, this is worth a lot of money. It's, you can tell these are sentimental to her. They are conquests. And sitting on this chair is a woman that I believe D is the only one of you who's actually seen. She is a, a woman, a human appearing woman who looks to be around her like late forties, early fifties. She's rather slim. She has light blonde hair and just her face is just, she has resting stone face basically. She is just, <laughs> she has a, a glare that will freeze you in your tracks. And that is why she has mm. earned the colloquial nickname, the Gorgon. And she, in fact, I'm gonna have all of you, every single one of you make a, there's only a presence stat in 5e, but I'll have you make a just a straight charisma check. Everyone roll charisma. Like a charisma like saving that. throw, essentially. Oh, saving throw. Yeah, Even why not? Better. Oh, yikes. Ooh. Okay. Uh 16 minus one. So okay. 15. Okay. I got a as a 15. as a rat. Plus three. You got a what, uh, uh, Jordan? I got a 15 plus three, which is an 18. Okay. Yes. Um, oh, sorry. No, go for it. Um, so unfortunately a seven, but plus three, so I rolled a ten. Okay. Reroll, 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 reroll. Yeah, reroll. If you want to use it, yeah, you got a lot. Them all. The you got a million. Them, so. Guess what my charisma modifier saving throw is? What is it? Zero. Oh okay. nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh I got a twelve. Okay. 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 20 Everybody... plus three, baby. What did you get? Twenty plus three. Okay. Wow. Um D, Natural I think 20. you are actually a little bit more. This is not like a spell. None of you were like have a spell cast on you. Sure. This is just level intimation. I think Claw, you definitely like you're not afraid of her, but you definitely feel a little bit more tense. Um, Lysandros, I think that your anxiety right now, you're more afraid of like the whole situation than you are of her. Also, you're in a situation where she owes you money, so you might not be as afraid of her as you normally would be. Yes. Uh, and Kelly, you're actually shockingly afraid of this human woman. Like you, you feel like you could probably take her apart if asked to, but yet somehow she terrifies you. Hey, we got raided by Pez Pusher. Thank you, Pest Pusher. Hey, um, Pest Pusher. That's hey. my friend Megan. 
Yeah, and uh, nice. Dee, I think you. you're you're about where you were when you left her last time. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Hey. Hey. Um, I have something. Yeah. That you want? Yes, I. I I know that because I'm the one who told you to bring him to me. Which right. I don't think I don't think Lysandros knows that in character until now. But I could be wrong about that information. No, I guess I didn't. No, <laughs> yeah. he did not for sure. Did not wait, know that. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. You wanted her to bring me to you, but because I how was else were how else were you going to get your winnings if you didn't come talk to the Gorgon now, now, specifically? Wait, wait. Come on, you think they just hand out winnings to anyone who just comes up? You think you don't have to talk to the boss directly? <sighs> D, sir. Look, I appreciate the craft. I appreciate your talents, but have a little professional courtesy here. You're bullshitting a bullshitter. We, the, 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 the game is out. The, the, if you are trying to trick me into doing this, then it's done. Are you both quite done? Or, or do I, should I wait? Is there more? How long, how long does this usually continue? I just oh. want to know if I need to plan my day. Around. I mean, years at this point, right, my dude? Uh, all right, Gorgon, ma'am, uh, boss, whatever. Uh, look, uh, the impression that I had when I came here is that I uh, won a great deal of money from you because I bet on uh, D to uh, win, and she did. Uh, and the odds were tremendously against that, uh, so... Uh, since that happened, you owe me a great deal of money. And I just wanted to inform you that my initial bet was illegitimate and that you don't need to worry about it. It's I'd funny that you record. say that, my talkative friend, because that's kind of why I wanted to speak to you. You see, prior to you coming to collect on that debt, I had already given D instructions to bring you to me because D won a fight that D was not supposed to win. Well, Sanders, you just keep talking when I tell you to stop talking. And I, I just, I find it interesting to learn that the two of you are such chummy pals. And that's after I informed D to bring you to me, the two of you showed up in my gambling den looking to collect the winnings on a fight that D was supposed to lose and did not. Now, can you see why I? I don't see why I am I'm not. Doing can wrong you here. see why I might have a problem with this? I scenario? am not looking to collect on those winnings. I am just looking to mm -hmm. make things square. And my understanding is, if I brought Lysandros in, then we are square, and I can scud dudes. I am not looking to collect on winnings. I understand. I humbly throw myself above your perfect, sublime, amazing, gorgeous, supple, supple, supple court, uh, 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 wondrous, uh, 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 um, uh, never, never wrinkling, always, um, always intimidating in your stark and amazing one wondrous boldness and and in in the way that you make sure that everyone is afraid man that is oh that is dope lady i uh, uh, uh the whole the... persuasion check for me daniel at disadvantage oh no <laughs> <laughs> do, do, only because you were do, rambling do. and i can't give you a regular straight roll once you, you like, absolutely are... cannot uh, oh well i rolled a 10 okay I, uh, I, uh, at disadvantage, yeah, so seven, yeah. Seven, all right. She goes, what was it that your friend just said to you? I believe it was, you can't bullshit a bullshit, or I believe that's the phrase that you, that you dropped in my office. So let's just go ahead and cut to the chase right here, right now. I paid you, D, to lose a fight. You chose not to lose that fight. And then somehow your friend went from owing me a great enough my deal friend. of money that I was going to have you brought here in order to essentially donate your labor to a friend of mine who needed it to pay off the debt that you owed me. But now apparently I owe you more money than I possibly should. 
Can right. you see why I'm a little bit, why the, the series of events causes me a little bit of fear, discord, Deba doubt, concern, frustration, anger? Look, the, Lysandros is ultimately just like useless. Like there's nothing, it doesn't matter what you do to him. Like it's not even fun to torture him, but he'll cry at anything. Like there's no point in taking him and making him pay for what he's done because at any moment, um, as soon as you tell him he might be in pain, he's suddenly gonna start just like bawling. It's not even fun to torture this man. Am I right, Lysandros? I mean, I, I don't know if that's, I don't know if you know how torture works, but it's actually really fun if they make a lot of noise. So I don't know why that would be, uh, but the point I is- don't cry <laughs> i don't but, cry often I I, but, but, I I don't know how it's in my advantage for you to, to tell her that okay because people like it when you fight when they get tortured and then they get to break you you are pre-broken and when someone has pre-broken you then it's no longer fun okay right? i just want to point out that i was never planning on torturing because that's not really what i, I don't need information thank you i i was going to again you owed me a lot of money and I was going to settle that debt by giving you to somebody that I owed some money to and let them do whatever they wanted with you. But now I owe you money again. I don't look, here's the thing. I cannot be seen as someone who does not pay her bets off. However, I also can't be seen as someone who can be a patsy to a scheme by my employee and a fixed bet by a gambler. And this so I fixed. have come up with a solution. And here's what it is. D, if you are such a fantastic gladiator. I'm not. Well, apparently you are because you won a bet and made this man lots and lots of money. No, I so saw. I don't know if you noticed, but I have a pretty capable fighting pit that happens to be right outside this office. And I think what I can do is put you and any of your friends who wish to participate in that fighting pit into a battle that will not be fixed this time to the death. Okay, so, one, you, so that's option you one. Win, if you win, then clearly you are a good fighter and this, this battle was not fixed and you won it by circumstance. Mm. And I will pay Lysandros what I owe him. If you lose, clearly this was a scheme and I will kill Lysandros. So either way, both of you die or you get to go free and get paid off and I get to save face. Right. Uh, right. At this huh. news, the rat is going to attempt to hide behind a chair leg. Okay. I feel I'm not super enthused about how this has uh, devolved. So, yeah, I'm going to hide behind a chair leg. So my options okay. are... Ruben, make a stealth check at disadvantage oh. because you were on okay. Lysandros' shoulder. So I think she would notice the rat jumped off. Ooh, and I, 18. We're all in the room. Yeah, minus one, 17. Okay, let me just do, I'm actually gonna counter that, because that's- Actually, no, I'm a rat, so it's just an 18. Okay, and then- nice. My dex went up to zero. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'm gonna roll real quickly for this character's, wait, that's not what's supposed to happen. Yeah, I'm not leaving, I'm just hiding behind a chair leg. <laughs> also, do I smell any cheese? Do not smell any cheese. Okay, just going keeps her office very clean. How dare you? Okay, and yeah, maybe you know what? She, she, has she, charcuterie. she is so focused on the 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 two uh, patsies that are in her office that she does not notice the rat. She is she is laser focused on. I think Dee was talking, so she probably was looking and she did not see you. So, right. so my options are your options are you fight or you die, and then you might die if you fight. Oh yeah? But you could live if you fight, and then in that case, then I won't kill you. And she can have friends. Well, I don't think she can make friends very easily, but you can fight alongside of her, if that's what you are asking. Very charming, first of all. Everyone likes me, I'm very cool. Um, Do you think it's really fair to have a Le Leonin fight in this little game of yours? Hey Dee. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you remember 
the opponent that you were battling in the arena in Neo Anton? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you describe him for me? Um, you know, just a big old powerful centaur. Minotaur, I think is the word. Minotaur. Just like a big powerful. Um, and we thought, oh, and he cried because like I beat him real hard. And then I was like, ah, I'm like, so sad. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you should be able to best more Minotaurs then. I did not say that. I, I mean, you just told I me you made a Minotaur like cry. Just so. like, but I did not say I could do more than one. But well, it sounds like you and your Leonin friend are qu very qualified to fight more Minotaurs then. So I believe that... Uh, I believe the arena champions Asteri and Theragog would love to face you in battle. Asteri and Minagog. Theragog. Theragog. I would I, actually say I, D, I, you've probably I, heard of these two, and they are they are like gods of the arena kind of. I like. uh, to 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 get together, like not separate. Oh, well, not just, just like I fight one, get, so I get like the right to fight the other one because that's the way that we usually do these battles. I well, the way one. we usually do the battles is you lose the battles you're supposed to lose, but since that didn't happen, I think some things are changing. We settle this with a fight, I think. And uh, oh, just God. to hedge my bets, can I put money on us losing? I mean, that if you means lose, we you die. die. I think you'd so. be Dead. I mean, yeah, but, you're, you know, you're just, welcome so, to put a bet that I literally don't have to pay out. I, do, I also don't owe you your money and I get more money. So sure. So I do my dream battle or I save the rest of these people that I'm hanging out with. Dream battle. People I don't know. Dream battle. People I don't know. Dream battle. I don't, I don't, I don't think you understand the either or scenario. In this. So I'm just going to recut. You have to fight or I kill you. That's the options. Sure, I don't, that's what you said. I don't, I don't care about these two. The, the rat, I don't know where the rat went and the, the, the Leon and I don't that's I mean, gone. If you want to serve me in the arena, I would be more than happy. I feel like I can make a lot of money off of you, but that's, I don't know her. The, the Sandros and your life are what is up for grabs right now, so. Well, if those are the options, I say we fight. Okay, great. Hell yeah, we fight. Love a good fight. I'm not much of a fighter myself, but so far they've all worked out in my favor uh, in the end. I mean, if you think of it as like a, a true or false statement of making it through a fight or not, so far I've made it through every fight. How many fights? Just, just out of my own moral, my professional curiosity, we'll call it. Oh, who keeps count? At least a hundred fights. She's very good at fighting. Okay, well. I believe you passed the arena on the way in. When's the fight? I believe you passed the arena on the way in. Oh, you mean like now? Yeah. I don't, I, I already don't trust you since my courier seemed to try to cut and run with my quarry. And so I'm not giving you another opportunity to flee again. Well, all right. If we're going to fight, I guess we should just fight. And when this is over, we can negate my bet. I, I don't think that was on the table. Damn it. I think it's All just right. living. I think it just, we have to live. I think it's just like a now, if you death. If you want to place a bet on your own death as you offered up, I'm willing to do that for you. But Let's do that. Okay. If I win, I want to retroactively have placed all the money that I won on me losing. I don't understand that, but it's a very simple bet. I, I. Will you just I, clear I, the bet I if we guess. win? Just clear, just, sure. Just, just don't pay it out. Like I, we're we're even. Call it even. Great. That sounds Evensies? wonderful. I'm gonna say I I have met a lot of con artists in my time, and this is definitely the worst con. I I don't understand this con, but if that's what you I, on you know what? Out of morbid curiosity, I'm gonna say yes because I just want to see how this plays out. Yeah. Well, the trick is that you're not the one being conned. That's All right. Very let's good. Because if I was, I would kill you. I think we've established that. So. Yes. Very scary lady, you have. You would try. <laughs> I have a name. All right. Um. <laughs> bye bye. This and is she, the Gorgon. Right. And then huh? she like like gets up, it's, it's a little too early for a revolving chair. So she just kind of like goes, well, 
goodbye. And then like, she stays where she is and your chairs result revolve because thugs have picked them up and turned them around to face you away from her. And Ooh. then back towards the door that leads to the arena. Wonderful thuggery, yes. Oh, really yes. good. Very efficient. Claw's mm-hmm. gonna scuttle out, but as he does, I would like to know how, if I can, how the Gorgon knew that the rat was a person. I don't think she, she just said your rat friend. She saw a rat on his shoulder and the rat ran away. So she just okay. said, yeah, she doesn't know. She does not know that you are a, pet a rat. Works yes. for me. Yeah. Yeah. If I, if I misspoke, I apologize. But yeah, I just meant she saw that rat ran away. If that's what it sounded like to me, I'm yeah. okay with that. As Although you did as... transform right in front of one of her lackeys, but yeah. True, but, but she the, did not know. She, she did not didn't know. have time yeah, to yeah, know that that's before just, she yeah. set the fight. Yeah, there was a rat on Lysandros' shoulder when you arrived, and then the rat vanished at some point, so she wondered right. where the rat went. So. so she made an unfair fight. She made an unfair fight for three people. I assume we're whatever backstage, cut to whatever backstage of the arena we are. Oh, now. there's no backstage. You are oh. led out, and there is a there is a big arena, um, oh. and it is, uh, it's basically, I would describe it for you. It is essentially, it's a big round arena. Uh, there are kind of like, braziers that are around every like there's there's about like i'd say like probably about 10 that circle it uh there are like tooth like spikes that stick out from the walls every like i'd say like about six to ten feet apart that go all the way around it there is a kind of raised up stage area looking down on it where there was a stone chair that is clearly waiting for her to come sit in it and then all around the outside there is like these stone with these there's like eye holes where the audiences can see into it and there are a couple of rocks like like strewn about and there are some metal grates so it's just very like it's just just okay. typical like fantasy arena basically packed so. crowd uh, pretty packed because they have been they have been there have been a couple of like like lower card fights but when you come back out you remember hearing people cheering on a fight when you were inside but when you come back out what you see inside are actually essentially effigies of d and lysandros that are being ripped apart by lions that have just been let loose inside the arena. So essentially what you heard ahead of time was the pre-show for the fight that you're about to do. And as you are preparing for this fight, as you're thrown into this cage, suddenly a different satyr comes running by outside, raising his glass in a toast. And he has several toasts to read off. Let's do it. The first word of those toasts, uh, he says, ah, with whale with all, says Haru Spicy, divination through the study of entrails. May our heroes have the guts to face what trials lay ahead. And then anyway. a second toast that he goes up is for, he goes, ah, Yanto Seven. He, he points to another another member of the audience and says, such a great episode so far. I'd be totally fine watching this gang try to make a simple decision over omelets for an entire episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I got- fear it would drive poor Callista crazy. Gotta mm-hmm. keep her feline fine. Mm-hmm. So thank you for those toasts. Those were delightful. Cheers. Amazing. Thank you all. Cheers. <laughs> And with that out of the way, you are thrown into this pit. Now, Claw, important yeah. question. Yeah. Did you follow them into the pit or did you as a rat stay outside? I, I followed them into the pit. Okay. Now, in my head, I'm thinking, uh, I'm hoping that the Gorgon thought she was making an unfair fight, but an entertaining unfair fight for three people. Okay. Then I can, I'm going to become a fourth person and hopefully that'll even the odds. Okay. That's what I'm hoping is going to happen. That's great. That sounds I'm not like sure fun, I can yeah. say that in enough time, but that's what's happening in my head. Okay. Yeah. That is, uh, that is certainly a wish. So I'm going to so, stay um, into in rat form uh, f- until probably until the fight starts. Okay. What I'm going to ask you all to do is a little mm-hmm. thing that I call rolling initiative. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. And I'm rolling initiative as the rat, right? Uh, yeah. I guess you would use your rat initiative. Okay. I like the dice I have, but they're a little hard to read sometimes. Okay. 
Um, let me go ahead and get these set up first. Um, How important oh. team do you think it is? No, I'm just going to keep it. Never mind. No yeah, meta. Maybe. No meta game. Huh? Yeah. I got it. Y'all should mine. use your your. Uh, if you want to go first, you should use your things. Oh, I got a 19. I got One a 15. Okay, oh yeah, so I figured you'd me, just ask. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Let me. I'm still putting in things here. You're good. Um, cool. So, while you're doing okay. that, I'm gonna ask a question. Oh, okay. Yeah, go for it. Okay, hang on. Um, so Callie, you said you did 15. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lysandros, what did you have? 19. You had 19. Okay, let me just hold off from everybody else for one second. I'm still adding you into my turn counter. All right, that's happening now. And then finally, uh, I have to put Claw in, and then that should be good for now. Okay, Claw, what is your initiative? Well, D is going to go before me. Okay, D, what's your initiative? I rolled for a seven. Seven? seven. Do you want to use a reroll? You have a reroll. Yes. Uh, use your rerolls. We have so many. Yes, from our wonderful friends. Oh crap! I rolled a twenty. That's nice. not possible. Hey, nice. Nice. Cool. Holy crap! It, it is right. possible because that's you're what excited. Um, you feel the cheers of the crowd. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, and then Claw, what was your initiative? So Claw also used a reroll. Okay. With my modifier of zero as a rat, I rolled a four. Okay. That's with the reroll. That was with the reroll. Okay. Yikes. And then let me go ahead and just do one more. I have to have another thing to do. It's okay if, if Claw goes last, though. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Also, I'm in rat form. Also, I'm going to hide behind a brazier. <laughs> okay. As a rat. Okay. Yeah, here. I'm, I'm not going to make you roll for that because that is a pretty easy thing for a rat to nice. do. Now, are the brazers built into the walls? I didn't look at the map. Is yeah, the no, they're kind they... of more. They're kind of more in the ground. They're kind of like coming up out of the ground. They're a little bit. They're they're out from the wall. What's coming? What's coming? What's built in the wall are the spikes that are coming out. Gotcha. Okay. I'll hide under a spike. Okay. Okay. So oh. if I have my shield equipped. Um, I can't use my great sword, right? You, well, it's versatile, right? It's a two-handed. Sorry, I'm having oh, a weird issue. No. I apologize for the listener. This is like a weird. Okay, there we go. If it's a two-handed weapon and you don't have like the oversized weapon use or whatever it's called, then I think you can't use the great sword. Oh. Yeah, you can't. You can't use a two-handed weapon and a shield at the same time unless you have a feat for that. Oh, right. Okay. If it's now if it's versatile. You can use it as a one-handed weapon, but I think a great sword can only right. be used as a two-handed weapon. Yeah. A long sword can be used one way or the other, but I right. think a versatile I... weapon means you deal more damage two-handed, but you yeah. can hold it one-handed. Yeah, yeah. I see. But a great sword is just two-handed. Is that what yes. you're saying? Yes. Then yeah. And then I just need to boost. Ooh. Oh, this would be fun. Okay. It is a great sword, though. It is such a great Pretty sword. Pretty great. It such is a good a sword. Great a sword. Great yeah. sword. Um, great. Um, uh, cool. All right. And uh, yeah, so we have now have an initiative. So the first person to go is going to be D. So D, you are essentially with your with with so far at least two of your friends, possibly a third, but he's kind of hidden, so you don't know where he went. You are shoved into this arena. There are there is a lion who is currently picking apart uh, a piece of what used to be a D effigy, and then suddenly like a grate is opened and the lions are left are led back out of it. So currently in the arena are you and Lysandros and Callie and a rat version of Claw, you see that in the chair that is overlooking the arena, the Gorgon sits down and she reaches over and she grabs a goblet and she raises it. And then suddenly you just start hearing drumming going off and you hear some loud banging. And then people outside start taking their own goblets and their own things. And they start like just banging those down on the ground. And there's a lot of like, there's a lot of very like that, that, that like Spartan, like <gasps> kind of things happening. And suddenly the gate, flies open and first you do not see the telltale hooves of a minotaur step in you instead see three uh grunts that are dressed these are all humans they are pretty bulky and they are dressed not unlike the as as, as ruben called it earlier the uh the the hermit crabs of the previous area they are all wearing clearly like armor that has been picked off of dead guards in the past and they are coming in 
carrying those. And the first one, they're about, I would say about 20 feet from you right now, because you're at about the center. Well, actually, I don't know how far in the arena you went once you're pushed in, mm -hmm. but they are on the other side of where the, you came in with. And so they're at least 20, 30 feet away from you. And they are all dressed in these outfits. And one of them has this long kind of pike and he takes it and he points it at you. And D, what are you going to do? Okay. Um, so the first thing I do, I look over, I see the guy with the pike um, that is pointed at me. I continue to look at him, do like some sneering, like a little bit of a, a, almost like a Conor McGregor, like fake um, posturing where you do like a lot of posing, walking like you're very confident. I'm walking right towards the guy with the pike as he continues to stare at me. Um, and then while he is doing that, the person um, next to him, who I imagine is fairly close, um, I get close enough to him without getting too close to the pike. And then I lunge forward to the other, his lackey um, around him, who I am assuming is doing nothing while he's watching all of this happen. Um, and I knee them directly into the stomach and then bring my sword up and okay. attack them in the midsection. Okay, I'm gonna make you make a performance check first to see if you're actually able to convincingly go to the other person. Mm -hmm. 11. 11. I'm going to say that he does notice that you come in and this is actually going to be combat. So we're, we're not going to be able to do too many actions in one turn. So right. I will let you make an unarmed strike attack to represent you attempting to do the knee. Cause you don't actually, you in character don't know if this guy noticed you looking at him or not, like they noticed your plan or not. Perfect. So go ahead and make a, I'm going to say, but because of that 11, I'm going to say make this unarmed strike attack with disadvantage. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a six. Okay. Um, so yeah, that didn't work. So what happens is you go to attack him with your knee and you thought you were being really smooth and stuff like that, but he also has seen you fight before probably. And he just like puts his hand out and blocks your knee from coming in. And that is going to be your turn unless you have a bonus action that is available to you. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna say that your um, your attempt to do chicanery was your bonus action. Cause I feel like yep. I, that is a lot to do in one turn. So that is your turn. Now it comes to Lysandra, so it is your turn. So okay. now D is approaching these guys about 30 feet away from you both. Okay, so besides the people we are fighting against and how many of them are there? Right now there are three, they're all human. Okay, um, so we've got those three. Is there anything else that's like in the arena or is it just a big empty area? There are a couple of rocks on the ground. There is not like weapons that are laid about or anything like that. It's like nothing like, there. the only things you could probably use to your advantage in the fight are the braziers and the spikes that are against the walls. But those are there are any not like corpses or anything that I could potentially like dive down and hide behind or among? The closest thing you would have to that is the pile of what used to be Lysandro's effigy. Fun. Um, okay, so what I want to do is just start things off by just grabbing my short bow out and be like, well, nice to meet you all gentlemen. And I'm just gonna try and uh, knock an arrow and uh, just shoot one of them. And I've, uh, I'll i do the one that's next to D so I can get my sneak attack damage if I hit. Okay. So, uh, attacking with the Oh God, not great. Can I get a reroll? I got. I rolled a three, yeah. <laughs> so I don't Take think that's gonna do it. Yeah, we have this is, rerolls. This is the time to use Claw, rerolls. Claw is like never gonna use any of these rerolls. Claw is always gonna go last in initiative and make people <laughs> do saves. Well, so when you I, when you initiate as a rat, that it doesn't help your initiative order. It's true. But yeah, that's, it actually helped me. I okay, went one fair. faster yeah, as a fair. rat. I rolled a thirteen, and I get a plus five on that, so okay. that's an eighteen. That just hits, so go ahead and roll your damage with uh, sneak attack damage added to it. Oh boy! Uh, where's my d6? Oh, I've got it right there. That's where my d6 is. So that's gonna be 2d6 plus three, uh, which is four, five, six, uh, nine. Nine total? Yep. That's including your initial damage, that's just your sneak attack damage? Nope, that's the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, so you definitely, so I think what happens is he puts his hand out to grab D's knee and then that mm -hmm. 
that arm is like suddenly like you get his arm with like, the yep. yeah so you got him really well with that so he definitely looks a little bit hurt from that and that is going to be your turn well you get, and then you get a bonus well, action yeah I, I get a bonus action and i still have my movement um but what i'm going to do okay is I after i fire it i'm gonna go like ha ha and then uh he, i'm going to make a dash towards the effigies and then sort of like do a little dive roll into the midst of them and try and take a hide action. Okay, sorry, I thought you were doing that ahead of the shot, so now I understand. Okay, yeah, so go ahead and roll stealth for me. I, ooh, not great. Um, so I rolled Again, a, we have a lot of re-rolls. Yeah, roll, yeah give me a re-roll, please. Yeah. Because I rolled a three, uh, and this time I rolled a 14, and on my stealth, that's a 17. How many do we have left? Uh, right now you have, 11. Oh, so you have 11, um, <laughs> yeah. unless someone missed one, but I'll, I'll say you have 11 no. just for the sake of it. Okay, you said that was a, that was a 10? Uh, it right. was a 17. Okay, let me just roll to see if he sees you. And uh, you know what? You just, yeah, you 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 just met it and you rolled dice, so you win that that tie. So you he does not see you. Great, okay, uh, that is your turn. Now, we're skipping that. Okay, now it's the first one of their turns and uh, they, the one who is standing there with D is gonna try to do a unarmed strike as well against D because she just, he's like holding on to her knee. So he's gonna take an unarmed strike and try to punch. And so he's gonna roll. And maybe that'll work, let's see here. <sighs> Trying to make these dice rolls, guys, sorry. Um, All right. Here we go. Okay, yeah, that definitely hits because that's a 22 and he's only gonna do, it's an unarmed strike, so it just does three damage to you. So he gets you right in the face with a good punch. Okay, oh. and the one that you were heading towards also is gonna take a strike at you, but this one is gonna use his spear to hit you. And he misses you. So that was uh, your lucky on that one because he only rolled a 10. And then the third one is actually going to run towards Callie. And I think he could probably get to you by the end of his run. So he gets up to you and he's going to actually take his shield and try to bash you with his shield. So he comes running at you, Callie, and he has his shield out and he runs up to you and he goes to slam into you. And uh, he... I have my shield right now. So I do have 16 AC just. Okay, I am glad you told me that then because yes. yeah, he you have your shield up and he rams his shield into you, but because you're holding that shield strongly, and the whole crowd goes crazy because like he bangs it and then you are still standing yeah. on your feet and it's real awesome and it's actually now your turn. All right, so I'll just <laughs> snarl at him as I hold my shield. Um, great sword still on my back. Um, I'm gonna attack this human yep. that I'm towering over. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use my claws. So I'm okay. gonna. And then just bring my claws up over the shield and just bring him down across the face if I can. Yeah, go for it. Make an attack. That's what I can do. That is a natural 20. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And okay. Okay. Go first. first of all, I think it's our first natural 20 in yeah. combat of the game. In combat, yes. And uh, we have a house rule here in order to make combat go faster for the sake of stream <laughs> that that natural 20 does max damage. So yeah. how much damage did you just do to this guy? Um, how do I tell with claws? Cause it just says um, 1d4 plus three. So I just do max so you, that? You would do the maximum of that. Yeah, so you would do seven. Seven, okay, yeah. cool. So. so you did seven damage to this guy and he is very cool. He's, he's not very cool. He's very not cool because you just slash this guy and he's not happy <laughs> about it. Uh, that is going to be, do you have a bonus action? Anything else you want to do on your turn? Um, not at the moment. I'm probably going to save my bonus action. Well, okay. well, no, you, if you don't use it now, then you would now, yeah, is but you it do max. It. Sorry. Clarification max mm -hmm. one day, one die damage or two die damage. I think, um, I only have one die for this one. I think yeah, we because, decided that instead of doubling it, yeah, we would just instead of give doubling the guys rules, you just get the max damage. Dies. Yeah, otherwise it's okay. a way more damage than is yeah. Uh, yeah. Then you're getting into like high end spell damage at that point. So understood. Just asking. That was just a save from because it's yeah, always yeah, yeah. a bummer when you roll double and then you roll two ones and, and you're like, you roll cool, two ones on, me that. Yeah. on three d six or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Now it's great when you roll two fours, but even then you're only getting just clarification. Just yeah, yeah. Yep. Um. I'm glad you asked because I wasn't 100% sure where we landed on that during Session Zero, so that's great to know. Uh, always, guys, Session Zeroes are great. It's a great yes. way to understand what you're doing. 100%. Yes. Um, cool. Um, All right. So she'll slash the face, and then she'll kind of just like look up at wherever the Gorgon is and be like, um, are we a joke to you? 
<laughs> and she's like, I mean, I think clearly the answer to that question I mean, is yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, she right. says she says to her guard that's like next to her, I think they, right. they know the answer to that is yes, right? And then that is your turn, Claw. It is now your turn. Okay, so here's what I'd like to do. Um, I'd like, it Settle seems down, like nice my- family. Right. <laughs> it seems like my my party doesn't necessarily need me right now. Is that the feeling I'm getting? That's that's you as a player. That's your decision. I can't make that choice right, for you. Right, but I'm I'm trying to gauge <laughs> the the danger. Is my point. I mean, they're fighting three well armed fighters in a pit, and you've been yeah, told but one of them dealt three the damage. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, I, I'm but the punch, but yeah. So yeah, with so on the one I can't, hand, I can't make that this is the decision for you as a player. Is what I'm saying. Okay, like, that is definitely fine. your to show, your choice. I also want to gauge the audience reaction to the three people that are fighting. Are the audience enjoying Lysandros, Callista, and D? Uh, e I mean, they burned them in effigy, so mm -hmm. clearly they knew who they were. Yeah, are they enjoying the show? They this crowd came for blood. They they don't really care whose blood it is at this point. Like they just they are they have bloodlust and it's being satiated right now. So they are very excited. I would say because this isn't your town and this isn't like your people, I don't think you would know 100 percent like what where their loyalties lie as far as yeah, an yeah, audience. Yeah. So yeah, but I mean they're enjoying the show though. Yeah, right now like, they are reacting to all the violence that's happening. They are into. They are I understand that we're it. the heels right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. But I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm not saying do they like us? I'm saying yeah. are they enjoying this? What I'm saying is when there is, some, there's been some violence so far, like when Callie slashed, they love it. They like it okay. even when the heels do damage because they're here for blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um... The idea, the thing about it this way is like that Melitus has kind of got this vibe of being the kind of like, nicer more upstanding and more civilized of the cities and okay. so i think this is kind of like the alligators in the basement this is like this is where the people that are like this is where they can unleash and it's like a pure vice den in an otherwise like very clean cut see city. this is weird to me though because i was i heard with my rat ears that we were fighting two minutes <laughs> mm -hmm. so i'm like there's another fight after this so i want there to be a pop when I show up, you know okay. what I mean? I yeah. want, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lay all the cards on the table. Um, Rat Claw is going to circle around behind the three of them. Okay. Uh, and keep an eye on the grate. Okay. And hold the dodge action. Okay, I will let you do that. And uh, go ahead and make a perception check for me with advantage on the crate while you're watching it. First one was a one. Second one is perception. Yeah. With a rat. Mm -hmm. 14. Well, perception is wisdom, which would actually be your normal stat. Oh, which would be my uh, normal perception. Yeah. Uh, 19. Great. I will say that you will be very, very aware if something happens with the grape because I, I think that the reason why I gave you advantage is because you made the you remember that you were told two minotaurs and you do not yeah. currently see two minotaurs. So I think that you are very aware that there is something else brewing. And so okay. I'm giving you advantage in that role. So yep. you will, you will be, I will, I will say that let's go ahead and say when the minotaurs show up, I will let you claw have a surprise round on them because nice. you rolled so high on that okay. and you were actively aware of it and yep. not distracted. And, and I'm going to dodge be, yeah. in case they see the rat behind them. Yeah, that is great. But okay. my party's doing good. If, and if I need to pop out, I'll pop out. Okay, great. Uh, we are now back to the top of the lineup, which is D. D, you have just been punched by one of oh. these guys that came up to you. And I think this is the moment. D, why don't you go ahead and make, this is not, this is a free roll. Make a wisdom check for me or a perception check for me. Ooh, okay. Actually, you know what? Make an insight check for me because you, this is actually more of an insight roll. They're both not great for me. I don't really yep, have either of those things. <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and re-roll. Yep. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No whammies, no whammies. Nine. Great. Okay. That's probably enough, right? Eh. Number. Eh. 
It's a number. D, do you think you, with the nine and with the scene, do you think D has clued in yet that this is a real fight and not the stage fights that she normally does? Or does she mm. think that she's still part of a stage fight? Oh, she still thinks she's part of a stage fight with a okay. nine? Yeah, yeah, no way. She thinks yeah, she's still very, part of a stage fight. This is like fight. three amigos where like you're feeling the bullets and you're like, this This is like, a, they're really committed to this bit. Okay. Oh, wow, sure. they really so, meant this. Given that information, what does D do as her next move? Um, So then D does pick up her sword. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, and with, and literally handling it the same way I am, like maybe mm-hmm. touching some of the stuff, like maybe the flats, yeah. um, even though it is like a, a real sword. It is a real sword that was given to you by a God. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. but still not careful or cool yeah. about it. Right. Um, but so she goes up, uh, uh, and, and she, she wields her sword and she goes, no, you can't hurt my friends. Uh, hurting my friends is like hurting me. And if you hurt me, then I have no choice but to strike down at you with all of my very important and high might because I, you suck and I hate you and good guys are terrible and suck okay, well, What do you do? You do? <laughs> what's your action? And then her action is- <laughs> This is great. I love it. But what's your action? She takes her sword and she holds it in front of her. Um, and then she does go to strike with her sword with the idea that she's trying to hit one of them across the arm okay. and not across any of the parts of the body that would actually be injurious or harmful. Right. Okay, I'm going to yes. have you roll an attack roll at disadvantage because you're actively trying to control your attack. Claw is giving two big, two little tiny rat thumbs <laughs> That is a two! <laughs> yeah, so you, I'm going to say... This is a weird thing because you failed at the thing you were trying to do. So I'm going to say that paradoxically, this is a weird move. Yeah. <laughs> you actually hurt him. You did yeah. damage to him. So yeah. go ahead and roll your attack damage. This is a rough you can't help yourself, D, can this you? Was, this is a tough bump. This is going to be rough in the locker room afterwards. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. That was so yeah. stiff. I know this is a weird thing to tell you to roll, have you fail the roll, and then you still do damage. But since you were actively rolling not to yeah, damage, exactly. I feel like this works. Sometimes oh God, I rolled DM, an 18. Gotta, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Wait, wait, you rolled 18 damage? Wait, hold on, hold on. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah, yeah no, roll no, the no. damage. Damage, damage roll. Yeah. Although that okay. I guess that, I will say that no. an 18 would have hit, so if you rolled an 18 to, to attack, then that hits. Right. So no, 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 no. So for my damage, I wound up rolling a nine. Okay. But still, that's still pretty that's good. A lot so of damage. Yeah, it takes a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, on I a, actually, I a, actually lowered these guys. As, okay, I shouldn't tell you that. Never mind. On a goon. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never mind. Nothing, nothing, nothing to see here. We're all friends. Yeah. All right. I don't uh, even know D, what we're fighting against. So. Yeah. So D, what I think t- what happened was you tried to do like like a like a like a like a fake hit, like maybe but maybe like you like try to turn the sword to not stab him yeah. but because he's actually trying to fight you he's not trying to be hit by a dull sword so he went to like dodge your attack and instead you got a really good hit on him and now <gasps> he's like bleeding and then you hear the crowd just going Aah! like crazy uh and then that is your turn um and then do you have any bonus actions that you want to use like a bardic thing or anything like that um uh 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 who mm-hmm. no i don't okay. want to use any of my bonus Cool. All right, Lissandro, so it is now your turn. You have, you, did you, you rolled stealth last time, right? So you hid behind yes, that. Yes, okay. to, to dive into the pile of, right. of effigies. That's right, I remember you rolled evenly, so you actually won the stealth roll. So you have that stealth roll, so. Yeah, so I, I, I'm in the pile of effigies mm-hmm. and I'm just gonna pop out and go, ha ha! And launch another. Um... Okay, I'm gonna say that if you hop out of the thing you're hiding stealthily in and yell "ha ha," <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say you're gonna roll. No, I'm gonna say you're gonna roll disadvantage when you go try to stealth again Amazing. because you announced your presence. Right, in so, space. But and this instead, one's. But is this one stealth? This is still stealth. Okay, but the and next I'm one, say, I'm, I'm running from here anyway. Yeah. After the next one is the next one's disadvantage because you okay. jumped out of the cake. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not staying I'm here gonna anyway. I'm going to let you it's have fine. it because you were few firing as you did it. I'm just going to say, this is a very similar thing to telling the guards that you're there to meet the mob boss. Right. Which, uh, yeah. So far which has worked kudos out. Kudos to you for playing your character very well. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and roll your attack and you get advantage because you're a stealth. 
Oh yeah, advantage. Okay, uh, well, with advantage, that is a 22. It hits, yeah, do your damage. We just, what's the issue? Sneak attack now. Which one are you shooting, the same one as before? Yeah, I'm, one, I, you one know, I'm keeping my, my pins in the same cushion if I can handle it. Okay, I like, that's a good turn of That phrase. saying is insane. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually want to give you, I know oh, we are, you know what, actually, Jordan, I'm giving you inspiration because I love that saying so yeah. much. <laughs> Holy yeah. crap. I've never heard right. that before. Uh, okay, so that's eight damage. Okay. He's looking pretty rough. This one, this guy is at death's door. Like, he is definitely down. He is, he, because I, th- I think that, I think that D hit him, and then <gasps> he, like, looked at his wound, and then you got an arrow. I think, like, it, like, went, like, full-on, like, clavicle. Like, he's got it there, and it's, like, he is not looking, like, he, it's, like, it's hard for him at this point. He's not having a good day, this guy. I still think it's fake, right? Uh, that is up to you. I think that I think that I will let you as a character decide when you think it's real or not. I'm not going to make you roll every time for yeah. it. But. So, yeah, it's still fake. Yeah. I may be reading this ability of the rogues wrong, mm-hmm. but it seems like every turn in combat, I can just take a bonus action to like do. Yeah, that's yeah, how it works. Just, just, you're talking about cunning Every action? turn, yeah. dash, disengage, yeah. or hide. Yep. So it's I a, could do the my... Rogues a- are great. So mm-hmm. I, I t- took an attack. Mm-hmm. And now I could use my move to go my full move, and then I could dash, so I could yep. go seventy feet sure yep. in any direction. There is not seventy feet to go in this arena, but you could definitely do that if it was a satyrs move thirty five. They do. That's insane. Mm-hmm. I know, right? It's fun. We're fast. So- I mean, centaurs centaurs move forty. No big deal. I'm just saying. So okay, this is almost entirely for flavor. Okay. I know there's not a lot of no, I like, advantage flavor. to this, but. After he leaps out of the thing, he just wants to like run past them, get to one of the walls and jump and kick off of it and then dash the other direction just to like keep them on their yeah, feet. Yeah, I'll let you get do them it because I love around. it. Just Bo I love Jack's it. in it. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm a fan of it. I'm going to let you do it. because This is that the is, equivalent of bouncing it off the ropes. It doesn't ropes. give you a mechanical advantage and it looks great. So I'm going to let you do it. You know what? It's awesome. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if I hadn't just given you inspiration, I would do it for that, but I'm not going to double up your inspiration. <laughs> That's fair. Because we, since we already have 11 rerolls, you haven't yeah. used yet. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. So that is your turn. And now it is the Hoplite's turn and they are going to, the, so the one that is fighting D is pretty rough at this point, but he is now, he is pissed. He is actually going to try to take his shield and bash you to get him off of him. And that's going to roll. And uh, actually I'm going to use a re-roll on that because I've got him too. And I should use him because the nice field paid for them. Yeah. And uh, that is a 15 D. Does that beat your AC? Yikes. Hold on. Oh boy, it certainly does. Okay, mm. he hits you for seven bludgeoning damage and it hurts. Like you're not used to hurting this bad in a fight because normally it's like pulled punches. He hits you hard. Was this shield. the shield? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This was a rough bump. Yeah. That's a rough bump. Yeah. You all right, D? Oh, ah. Uh, actually, I... I need you to roll a strength saving throw for me. Okay. Ooh, jeepers. Not you, Claw. Okay. Yeah, I know. Okay, I thought you were. I thought you were turning to roll. No, I didn't no, know there was that, another he, thing he, on top he of didn't the hit damage. He didn't hit her that hard. Yikes! Yeah, it hit you so hard, your grandma feels it. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> saving throw. Uh, I rolled a five. Okay, he. When you get hit, you actually are knocked prone. So on your next turn, Ooh. you will have to use half movement to stand up again. Yeah, um, and that also is what he other stuff really with prone. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, and that is going to be his turn. The other one, the one who is fighting Callie, is going to take a swing at Callie with his with his. He's actually he's still trying to use shield bashing too. Because it's a pretty violent thing to do, and it's fun. Um, and that's going to do a. Oh, actually, that's a twenty-four. So that one I think actually hits you, right? Yeah, it does. Yes, yeah, so that just does five damage to you. But I need you to also make a saving throw to see if you're not prone or not. Okay, let's see. Strength saving throw. Yeah. Uh, that's a 20. Okay. Yeah. You succeed. So you are not knock prone. All right. And then the last one, I think, so just to, just to make sure that I'm right on this, Lysandros, you did not hide, right? You just ran away. No, I just ran. Okay. Ran uh, this, guy, circle. this guy is going to try to throw his spear at you. Yeah. So, uh, he throws it and it is, uh, he misses, he misses by a lot. I'm going to reroll that. Cause why not? I have them. Um, yeah. Ha ha chump. All right. And then it'll hit me. And he actually he did. Yeah, that was a twenty-two. So that does hit you. And oh, oh my. Um, wait, no, that's not right. Okay, he does. 
there's a weird thing happening with these roles now where it's, it's getting both possible things instead yeah, of just the one. Yeah, we had uh-huh. this problem last week too. Yeah, so he only did, he did six piercing damage to you as, as you were running by. So he basically, I think you were doing that cool jump off the walls. And by <laughs> doing that, you like gave him a good target to hit. So he like chucked it right into you as you like, you like leapt out into his spear as he throws yeah, it. Yeah, I'm just like, can't catch me, chumps. And then it goes, oh, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get to Callie, it's your turn. All right, I'm gonna... I looked at. I'm gonna X, just. Right? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna just. Yeah. Claws going right back at him. Okay. I'm gonna re-roll that. Okay, go for it. You have ten left. That is better. Um, so twenty-three. Yeah, that hits just barely. No, that hits. That hits a lot. <laughs> that hurts. Yeah. Ah. All right. So, and that is damage time. I need a D. One, yes, all right. Um, and then hi, kitty. Yeah, okay. yeah. good timing, cat yeah. on the <laughs> attack roll. All right, so and that's five damage. Okay, Can oh, wait, you... sorry. Um, hold on, doing math here. Uh, one, yeah, five, wait, one, two, three, yeah, five damage. Okay. So yeah, that he did not like that, but he's doing somewhat okay with it. All right, cool. All right, that is going to be uh, your turn, and then now we come at the claw's turn. Claw, are you doing anything on your turn? Yes. Yeah, so, um, have any of the humans that we're fighting against died? Fallen? No, but one is very close to it. The one, one that was the one by D is like at death's door. Like now, by death's door, gonna... do I think that I could stay in rat form and deal it? Ah, damage and kill it no okay <laughs> i would have to come yeah. out of rat form so the way that the way that i i codify i i know and this is somewhat common but uh basically hurt would be like 75 percent bloody yeah, be yeah, 50%, yeah, yeah, yeah. death store was 25 percent or less so anywhere from 25 percent or less is at death store yeah i don't know if i want to come out of rat form yet so i get it, I get it. you want to put on a show i got gotcha. you i'm gonna now are any of them so uninjured so. There is one, the one who threw the spear at Lysandros is looking fine. Because he's nice. the one that D was going to and then like ignored yep. it. So Rat is Rat is gonna go after the uninjured one okay. and hopefully distract that one so that there's no more two-on-one attacks. Okay. So rat, you're, you're, you're using the help action, is what you're using. No, I'm attacking. Oh, you're attacking. I thought you were Yeah, using rat is gonna bite. Rat okay. is gonna bite go for and it. using not? a reroll. Okay. Nine 18. That hits. That just hits. Really? Just nice. hits. They're wearing armor. Yeah. All right. Take a damage. Okay. As uh, my rat bites your ankle. Okay. And that you is going to be him your turn. And now, D, it is your turn again. So and I think I'm, at this point, I'm going to say, D, you might be cluing in. This is a real fight. <laughs> you Okay. How much? I'm sorry. No. What do I roll um, in order to no longer be prone? Uh, you don't you have just, to roll. You yeah. just use. You if you were going to move, you have to use half your action to get up. So if you if you if you get up, you can only move fifteen. Half your feet. movement. Half your movement. Half your movement. Sorry. Oh geez, yeah. Okay, so uh, I move uh, uh, to get up, and I'm like, dudes, like, what the f? Why are you effing with my A's over here? You're being total D's. Uh, well, as I'm it's talking. like putting his fingers in his ears, <laughs> yeah. like this language. Oh my god! And, and I, D, D, I want you to make a. I want you to make. An intelligence check for me. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. I rolled a one. I'm okay. gonna Okay. Do you want to use a reroll for that? They think you might. You know what? I think it's funny not to. Okay. Yeah, D, you have yet you have yet to clue. I was gonna I was gonna give you the memory funny of not hearing to. her say a, battle to the death. This but is the melatis screw yet. job is you what this have is. It yet. <laughs> So, um, yeah, Lee, you still have not figured out this is not a real fight. So I want to know oh what you do gosh. in response to that. Um, so I see people laying around and I'm like, I had no idea these guys were so good at fake combat. Um, this is so, the undercard too. <laughs> right. It's not even the real card. Okay. And so uh, uh, just, just to recap. So we've got um, the guy that I actually hit is on the ground. He's really messed up. Yeah. He's really messed up. Okay. Um, he's not so, on the ground. He's still standing, but he's rough. He's still standing, but he's rough. Okay. So I go over to him because I'm like, well, clearly you're the only one that's playing around and understands what we're doing here. Um, 
And I walk up and I'm like, you're doing so good. Oh my God, you are nailing it. And I take out my sword and I once again go um, to hit him, but I go to hit him in the side. Um, and again, that's still like a half a, a half action. Um, and, I, and I go to hit him in the side with my sword. I'll sit down and I'm like, you're doing so good. Oh my God, you're selling this so well. This is the best I've ever seen you do this. You go ahead and make uh, your attack anyway. <laughs> and then I make my attack. Um, and I rolled, I rolled me a nine. Okay. This time I'll say that you actually do miss him because that's that's pretty. Did you, like, wait, did you have yeah. a reroll? Take your reroll. You want to use a reroll? All right, let's do a reroll. Reroll. Yeah, re-roll. make it happen. People who were attacking with non rat bites, take your rerolls. <laughs> I'm like, take them all. 18. Yeah, that just hits. Roll your damage. Roll your sword oh, damage. 18 is a high armor class. Yeah, I may have not thought that through when I made the characters. <laughs> well, it's fine, we got a bunch of rerolls. It's cool. You know what it is? I, I will say that I just used the the stats from the Pharaohs book for the Miletian hoplites, and I just sure. lowered their I lowered their their HP a little bit. So yeah, they're all good. So. I rolled a five. Uh, yeah, uh, D. Describe to me how you accidentally <laughs> killed this guy when you were trying to keep him oh, no! for the spell. Uh, I love that like, you accidentally He's not, accidentally he's keep not yeah. really dead. He's just, he's just, this no, is a good cell. Sleeping. This is a good yeah. cell. Yeah. yeah. How he's do dead. you, D, to, in, the, in, the, in the phrase of another famous D&D uh, show, how do you not want to do this? Right. <laughs> um, so the way that this works is, is that like, I've got him, um, I, uh, I've got him, I've got my uh, my sword raised up and I go and I go to raise and I raise the flat of it um, against the back of his neck, expecting that he is then going to collapse completely because that's what's happened. Mm -hmm. um, while he is actually still trying to fight because he still believes he is very much trying to stay alive, he moves in such a way that the blade <laughs> of the armor it, uh, that is going towards his neck, which would again, normally be in the same way you would use a chair um, to hit someone yeah. in the back of the head. I'm using, uh, I'm using the flat of my sword um it winds up actually hitting him and then hits uh one of the very important arteries and blood just starts <laughs> gushing out of his <laughs> oh neck my gosh as he collapses yes, onto I the ground this. and i'm like oh my god dude i thought we weren't allowed to blade anymore you're not supposed right? to be doing fake blood exactly i thought that this was outlawed yeah they put that in, he put it in his lip this is unbelievable yeah, I can't believe, where were you hiding that where it would happen on your neck? That's amazing. And, and you're asking these questions and he is not answering and he is on the <laughs> ground. He is he is convulsing and it is not, it is, D, I am going to say that, that you have been in a lot of fights and you have seen a lot of fake deaths. This is a, you, I'm going to say that whether you know this is a real fight or not at this point, you know that you have just killed this man. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not even going to make you roll the intelligence check for it. This is the moment, D, where you realize that you have just killed this man in the fight. And that or is going to be- it's the, a really good sell. Yeah, or this guy's, this, or if, if you don't think you've killed this guy, you think this is the absolute best fighter in, in, in fake fighting that you've ever seen. So I duck down and I'm like, dude, this is like really amazing. You're doing a great job. But at this point, you're starting to actually freak out the crowd. I don't think they're super- The Did crowd, you... loving it. The crowd is <laughs> super into it. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah! dude. And I start like, I kick him a little bit because every fake fight has a tell where you can tell yep. if someone's really injured or not. Yep. And so I nudge him a little bit to wait and see if he's actually faking. And I turn him over and I see the like the blank look in his eyes. Mm -hmm. And that is when my face turns and my eyes get big and they start watering and I go, holy as. Yeah. And I'm stunned at this point as I realize <laughs> that this is a real fight and I've really gotten these real strangers into real big trouble. Yeah. And this is this is where this happened. The crowd is going nuts. This guy is dead. He he's just he's gone. And then Lysandros, it is now your turn. Uh, Ly Lysandros will see D suddenly realize what's going on and be like, yes, welcome to the party, D. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lysandros is just chaos agent. I so love great. It. I love it. He's like, I knew this was terrible the whole time. <laughs> oh, hey, this has worked so far. And he's just going to like knock another arrow and 
try and uh, get to somebody Ooh. else. Is there is there someone else who's close enough to D that I can get the sneak attack? Yeah, I will phone? say the the one that is actually not only is he engaged with actually both of them are engaged with your allies, so you can get sneak attack on either right. one of them. I got one, one of them, engaged one of, the, with one of them is engaged with a rat, and one of them is engaged with a cat. And you have the ability to take uh, to fire either one of them. Uh, and I'm not going to let you decide which one. I'll, I'll let you decide for yourself. I mean, which one do you think needs your help more? The one being bit. Right. daintily on the ankles or the one fighting a monstrous like lion yeah the, the one that i see kicking around trying to get a uh a thing off his ankles like ah oh, that looks distracted enough <laughs> yeah I, in fact i would let you roll with advantage on that because he is very distracted yes i will take it i will never turn down Actually, you know what? i'm not i'm not gonna let you have advantage on that because we have eight rerolls left and the show's almost over so sure. okay i'll I use reroll then yeah yeah <laughs> Then I got 18. Yeah. Okay, that hits, that just so hits. I rolled a 13 so plus five. You are, yeah, you got it. So we have seven re-rolls left and that does hit. So go ahead and roll your sneak attack damage. Well, I dropped one of my dice. It's gone forever. I will grab another die. Oh, come the fuck. I just, I just did that. <laughs> I know your pain. Mm -hmm. I just dropped two dice in a row. I, I don't get... have that many spare dice. That I is, get... that is, that is Phoenix. Uh, get you a, Phoenix. Get you a that dice is, that is, it. hey, Jordan, that is Phoenix giving us curse on the Sandros. <laughs> Oh, well, your seems... dice suddenly got very healthy and he heavy and dropped to the floor. Yeah, well, look, he made me work for it, but uh, but then he rewarded me because I rolled two sixes, uh -huh. nice. which Ooh, uh, nice. that's fifteen damage total. Yeah, that th this guy he went from being scraped to being bloody. So, oh. yeah, nice. cool. it just like slams right into his back, like kind of right between the shoulder blades. He's like, oh! yeah, yeah, he is right. Yeah, he's the one who did throw his spear and hit you, so it, it's apropos that you hit him back. But I think I think he threw his spear, then he got bit, so he was focusing on that. And then he like looks up and suddenly he sees an arrow coming right at him from the guy he just hit. So he's like, ah, he's very mad about it. Uh, that is going to be your turn. Do you want to do any of your cunning actions or anything on this turn? Is there somewhere else I could hide? Um, you could go back to the the thing that you hit at before, but the guy who you just hit is watching you, so you'll have to. I don't go right, back to where I hid before. <laughs> That's not how I roll. That's yeah, not right. my style. Yeah, I don't think there's anywhere else you could hide in this particular space. I think it's pretty. It's a pretty wide open arena. I think. I think makers of blood sport arenas don't tend to want their competitors Have, to like, be able yeah, to easily hide. Spots. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what I'll do. I'll just try and position myself such that only one of them can easily sh like do something at me without like the other one's blocking them. If that the other sense. one, I'm going to say the other one, it, it's, if you want to do that, I'll say that you kind of moved to where you were on the other side of Cali because like Cal it's Cali. There's the hoplite attacking Cali. And then there's the guy who's like, who you just yeah. hit. So I'll let Perfect. you Perfect. Sounds great. Great. All right. Uh, speaking of Cali, it's your turn. Wonderful. All right. I'm going to slash right back at him. All right. Go for it. Uh, that's another 23. Yeah, Jeepers. that hits. Yeah. Oh, that's what you're here to do, so. Welcome uh, to be in the group fighter. Three, yeah. That's a seven, so just. Yeah, <sighs> he's, looking pretty, he's looking pretty rough. Um, all right, and then that is going to be your turn. Now we get back to Claw. Claw, it's your turn. Okay. It's looking, so one of them's down. Two of <laughs> them are, like, pretty hurt. I'm going to disengage from my current fighter. Okay. And I'm going to go over to the grate. Because these guys came out of the, the the grate, right? There's a grate on the wall and one on the ground. So, which, like, the one on the ground Cute. is mostly for blood to fall down into, but also animals can come in and out of it. But Right. Yeah. I'm going to go to the one on the wall. Because okay. I'm assuming that's where the minotaurs are going to come That's from. like the tunnel, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm going to go, how far away is the one on the wall? I would say from because those guys that you were fighting came out of it. I'd say you're like five or ten feet away from it if you're if you're biting the ankle of one of the guys who came out of that grate because they didn't go very okay. far in the room before D attacked them. All right, in that case, uh, disengage is my regular action. Go over to the grate, and I have dark vision out to thirty feet as a rat. I want to look for these minotaurs. Okay. Um, I will let you make a perception check. Okay. Do rats have dark vision? They do. Thirty feet. Okay. You said that already, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, Reroll, because I rolled a two. I'm checking the clock, I apologize, yeah. Uh, 14. Yes, yeah, so you you can see somewhat in the dark. It's like seeing in dim lighting, but you don't see anything yet. Okay. Um... All right, I'm gonna just gonna hang out by the door. Uh, okay. 
and I want I want to like look at the crowd, see if there's anything weird happening with the crowd, or if they're just into it. The crowd's just into it. So far, mm-hmm. it's the same thing you've been noticing. The crowd. I, I think I think the first death just happened. So yeah. that's like that's like six seconds ago. So yeah. they mm-hmm. are they are like fear like foaming and like there's there's people handing money to each other because people are taking bets on who the first one to die was going to be and so okay. people are getting those kind of things out there are people like spilling wine everywhere there's like drinking and there's smoking it, 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 it's okay it's just like a, it's like the bad kids can i see the th- can i see the stone throne from here or is the stone throne like above the the door what stone the the throne that what's her name was sitting on the the gorgon oh throw sorry I thought oh, you said I was confused too stone, like yeah. someone threw a stone I'm no, like no, I don't know stone yeah you can kind of see it it's yeah. kind of like it's not on I want to see what a, she's thinking oh she's very stoic right now she is just kind of like okay she seems I, I'll say this she seems annoyed that you are doing a better job than I think she expected at killing off her hoplites that's good and in fact it's that's good. it's I will say, I'll, I'll let you take your action and then I'll, I'll tell you what she does. Well, my action was to disengage. Okay. Because I didn't want to take any damage. Okay. Uh, I have no other, I'm, I just want to look around and gauge what people's reactions are because I don't think I have to spring into action yet. Okay. I will say, uh, is that the end of your turn? That'll be the end of my turn. Okay. That actually works out great for me, turn order, because of what time it is and where we are. I, it's actually lined up great. So you look up at her to see what she is doing. And what she is doing is she's reaching out her hand and she's putting her thumb out and she's putting her thumb down. And when she does that, the guards on either side of her both pull out gigantic longbows much bigger than anything anyone in the arena has and they fire both of them and both bolts land on the two hoplites that you have been fighting and they are both dropped and this is their punishment for the fact that they have not successfully beat you and so these two guys drop down and she stands up and she has this kind of like staff like this that was next to her chair and she picks it up and she taps it down on the ground. And when she does that, the entire arena starts tapping theirs down, tapping theirs down, tapping theirs down. And in that rhythm, you now, because of your check, you hear the unmistakable sounds of four pairs, well, two pairs, but four total hooves of minotaurs approaching the arena. And that is where we'll end the show tonight. Great, perfect. Up. <laughs> yeah, nice. uh, nice. Opening act. I, I. That's what I was hoping to figure out. Okay. Yeah. That is. That is what. That is a. Yeah. That is a. A great moment to end on. Is is you have gotten through the the lower card. Yeah. And now the top card is here. And Main so event, will, baby. Yeah. We will pick up with the Minotaur battle next week. And let's just check in to see if we have any more toasts that have come along tonight. Uh, we do not have any more toasts, but we do want to thank everybody who contributed to the show tonight so far. You guys were all very welcome. We love it. We hope you enjoyed. Yeah, thank you. Tonight. Thank you Woo, so appreciate much. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, so then while we were at it, let's go ahead and first of all, go around. Let's go in reverse order. We always, we always make people go first and second and last. So Ashlyn, why don't you tell the audience hey. where they can find you and all the delightful things about you. Awesome. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I'm on there most of the time uh, as Ashlyn Rose. You can also find me on Instagram where I have like the countdown to the show and where you can find the podcast link if you need to catch up on the show, which is as raw as Ashlyn. Uh, and if you ever want to check out my voice acting demos and all that fun stuff, I actually have a website you can go to, which is ashlynrose.com. Great. And now Jordan, tell us where they can find you. Hey everybody, my name is Jordan Pigeon. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon, and uh, I'm also on Wild Cards, which is another show on this channel. And we are currently uh, between seasons right now because we just finished the first season of our um, our new Wild West Dark Carnival kind of setting, uh, Nightlingers uh, Carnival, Traveling Carnival of the Extraordinary. Uh, so this is a great time to get caught up on that, and then be ready when we jump into it uh, in January. Great, excellent, Danielle. Where can people find you? Oh yeah, just find me at like uh, Danielle Radford on Twitter, Danielle underscore Radford on Instagram. That's usually where I pull all my stuff. Uh, I uh, I'm uh, I wrote uh, an issue of a comic book, and when I can announce that, I will let you guys know uh, what Ooh, that is. Very nice. excited about that. And Ruben, last but not least, well, I'm last, but you're not least either. Right. Le- well, I'm certainly not least. No. But- uh, second to last, but certainly not least. Hi, everybody. I'm the Internet's Ruben Bressler. You can follow me everywhere at the Mox Ruby that you see in the thing here. 
uh, M-O-X-R-E-U-B-Y. I also have a project I can't announce that'll happen at some point um, and it'll be super obvious when it happens. Uh, it's another D&D thing um, oh, and nice. it'll be on YouTube probably, I think. Uh, I am also one of the co-hosts of the show Magic Mics. That's M-I-C-S. That's a weekly Magic the Gathering news talk show. Um, and uh, I do voiceover as well. Um, and it's the holiday season, so maybe you'll hear my voice on a commercial or something. <laughs> and uh, I am Riley Silverman, and you can find my writing on Nerdist. You can also find me on Twitter at Riley J Silverman and on Instagram at Riley Silverman. And not unlike everybody else, I have a thing that I just wrote for Screen Junkies <laughs> that I'll be very excited to do <gasps> yeah, comes out. That so, or for NBA fandom, life. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes, and I'm excited about that. I turned that in last week, so we'll see how that turns out. I'm excited for it, but uh, that is that is me. That is our people, but you guys, we also have so many amazing shows here on the Saving Throw Show channel, and in fact, I am ecstatically excited about tomorrow night's show, yeah. which is the it's the Good Society. It is at 8 p.m. tomorrow night, which, as we know, the Good Society is their Jane Austen themed RPG they've been doing as a like a side quest essentially from the, the Pirates of Salt Bay. However, because of unlocks on Patreon and wonderful viewers of our channel, not unlike yourselves that are watching this right now, it is a zombie themed Jane Austen Good Society oh my episode. God. Yes. And it's going to be great. amazing. And I, I am so excited. I, I love that people unlock that. And so that is going to be that. And so as always, we, we thank you for your support for the channel. We're glad you tuned in tonight. Thank you to all the raiders. Thank you to all the subscribers. And of course, thank you to the Devil Overlord, Dom Zook, for making this all possible and our individual series producer, Karav Galati. Thank you so right. much. Love you. And Y'all keep rolling. Have a great night. Stay mythical. Good night.